Hi everyone, this is just going to be a video listing some useful keyboard shortcuts uh, for digital painters in Photoshop CS6, although most of these should work in other versions too, and you'll probably find that a lot of these are helpful even if you're not a digital painter, just as long as you're using Photoshop of course. I'm going to try and keep this video relatively short, and I've already got all the shortcuts listed on screen now so that you can just pause the video here and just look at them if there's, if there's one you're specifically after. Uh, for everyone else, I'm just going to quickly go through each one. So on the left we've got single key shortcuts and on the right I've listed a few that basically require you to press a couple of different keys at the same time. Uh, and I've tried to kind of order some of these um, to some degree in you know how often I use them. Some I don't use at all though. So the first one we've got on the list is the brush tool. So pressing B on your keyboard will give you the brush tool. And obviously this is pretty basic but very important if you are digitally painting. Then we've got E. Pressing E gives you the eraser like so, easy enough to use. Then we've got pressing I which is the eyedropper tool. So pressing this basically allows you to pick a colour off the screen. Um, so if I wanted to use white I could click that and you'll notice my foreground colour here changes to white. So again if I select the black it changes it to black. Pressing L on the keyboard gives you a lasso tool and the lasso tool is great for making selections and you can do several things with the selections but I'm not going to get too much into that in this video. But for example, you could paint just within that selection, not going out the lines, or you could move that selection, which I'll show you in a second with that shortcut. Um, to deselect this, over here we've got Control and D. So Control and D should deselect that so you can now paint outside them lines. Pressing Z on your keyboard, or Z, depending on what you want to refer to it as, gives you the uh, magnifying glass zoom tool. Pretty straightforward. And V gives you the option to move things on that layer. So let's say we switch to our brush and we've made this smiley face. Very artistic. And if you press V for the move tool, that allows you to select whatever's on this layer and move it. Pressing H on the keyboard gives you the hand tool, which actually lets you move the whole page. So this is handy when you're zoomed in. It's not moving just this one thing on the layer, like the move tool. It's allowing you to sort of drag the full page. Pressing P on your keyboard gives you the pen tool. This is quite handy for getting really smooth lines, although I personally find it quite difficult to use, um, but it is good for vector drawings and things like that. Um, but if you want a pen to look, you probably won't be using the pen tool too often. Pressing O on your keyboard gives you either the dodge tool, the burn tool, or the sponge. Now, I've listed all three, but if you right click on it over here, you'll see that all three are under the same selection. And I've written down here, hold shift with the shortcut to cycle. So we already know that pressing O gives us these tools, but if you hold down shift and O, you will notice on that left sidebar, it's just cycling through them. I'm not an expert with these tools, but I believe that the dodge tool can help sort of brighten some things up, and burn tool obviously darkens things, and the sponge I've never actually used, so I wouldn't like to say. Pressing X on your keyboard switches these two colours down here. So this black one in front is the foreground colour, and this red one to the back is our background colour. So pressing X, we'll just flip them, we'll just reverse them round, nice and simple. Pressing G on your keyboard actually takes these two colours and allows you to put a gradient on screen. So you just drag the direction you want it to be, like so. And obviously this just uses the two colours here. You can swap them round just by clicking the colours and selecting what you want from there. If you want to rotate your canvas at all, you just press the R key and then you just drag like so. If you want to reset this, there's a reset button up here. Pressing F cycles you through different full screen modes, like so. Not something I use, I prefer having all these bits down the side, but some people find them annoying. And as we've already mentioned, pressing Shift with any of these will cycle through if there's more than one option. And whilst already on your brush tool, you can press the square brackets, depending on which one you press, it will either make the brush smaller or make it larger. You can hold these down and keep them going for longer. It just makes it a bit easier than selecting your brush size up here. Now the numbers I've written down here are also quite handy when it comes to brush settings. So up here you've got opacity which is set to 100 which comes out like this. If you wanted that set to 10 you could just press 1 on your keyboard and I'll go like so. Pressing 2 like so you can see that's taking it to 20%, 3, 30%, 4, 40% and so on. All the way up to 0 which acts as 100%. If you press the keys fast enough, you can press two together. For example, if I wanted something between 50 and 60, I could just type in 56, and you'll notice up here that has changed, and that's 56% opacity. And we've got some more shortcuts on the right here, which uh, require more than just one key, but still relatively easy to use. So Control D, as we've already mentioned, if you were using the lasso tool, 
and you want to get rid of that, Control D, just deselects it, unselects it. Control Alt and Z is your undo button. So I'm going to open this history menu here so you can see how this works. You don't need that there though. And Control Alt and Z, you can see it just undoes things that I've done. And alternatively, you can switch to Control Shift and Z, and that will go forward. And I would say that's probably one of the most important things you could uh, know as a digital painter because you will constantly be undoing things. Unless it's just me that makes mistakes, which is definitely a possibility. So shift and tab is not one I, I personally use very often, but it just gets rid of that side panel. Some people find that annoying. Now if you want to fill a layer, for example this background layer, you want it all one colour. Holding control and backspace will fill it with your background colour. So in this case my background colour is red. So control and backspace, everything goes red. If however I was to press Alt and Backspace, I would find that it would use my foreground colour, which in this case is black, so let's test that. Alt and Backspace, everything goes black. So I'm just going to Control Z to get off that. And that is basically it. I'm sure that I've probably missed some shortcuts, but hopefully I've listed enough to get you guys started, you know, especially if you're new to Photoshop, this might just help you out a little bit. Uh, so yeah, thank you for watching.